we are live welcome tom how are you i'm doing great how are you i'm good i'm good let me put down my fiddle summertime indeed yeah it's been so hot i'm in new york city and you are only 60 miles north of new york city <laughs> yeah yeah thankfully it was a little bit cooler today finally the weather seems to see it seems to be cooling off a little bit yeah it's yeah, yeah i can feel that yeah and yesterday was was pretty brutal so uh thank you for being with me and let me read uh introduce you to our audience um the first paragraph of your bio, the rest is in the description below. Tom Langan is a two-time Emmy Award nominated director of photographer and producer. With a career spanning 20 years, Tom has produced 100 of hours of national and globally distributed programming for major broadcasters, including BBC, NBC, Universal, and Discovery. Tom has served as showrunner and series producer on multiple complex and challenging projects, overseeing multi-million dollar budgeted pro uh, productions. He has staffed and led teams filling all over the world filming all over the world in environment uh in environments what environments ranging from uh attic circles to sub-sahari africa producing lifestyle documentary entertainment and commercial content great welcome tom Thanks for um, having me, Ching. It's a pleasure yeah. to be here. So tell us a little bit, uh, how did we meet? <laughs> well, we met uh, through Clubhouse, right? Uh, so every week, every Wednesday morning, a good friend of mine, uh, Dom, uh, Dominic, and I host a room on Clubhouse um, called Publishing, Podcasting, um, uh, Social Media, um, and social media. And basically we, we just talk about all things media related in there. Um, and, uh, I'm not sure how you found your way in one day, but you found your way in. We, we like to provide a sort of equal opportunity space. So anybody that wants to come up on stage, um, and speak in our room is welcome to do so. And, uh, so yes, we brought you up on stage. We heard all about, uh, your exploits as a, uh, filmmaker and creating a documentary uh, with iPhone video, um, and uh, and yeah, we've uh, we've stayed in touch and and see you there pretty regularly on Wednesday mornings, and that's my live stream. Uh, so we live stream that room as well. So we live stream it on on uh, a bunch of different platforms, LinkedIn and Twitter and and Facebook and YouTube and um, Twitch, uh, uh, to name a few. And so yeah, so that's how we met. Thank you, thank you. Such a great uh, summary. Now, um, tell us a little bit about, um, I know you wear a lot of hats. You're a producer, you're a DP, uh, you're a motivational uh, speaker, and you've done so many projects, you know, TV-wise, filming-wise, and uh, yeah, so, now, how did that all happen as far as being a media person, being a TV or photographer, of a, you know, director of photographer? So honestly, I got my start in media by accident. Um, so <laughs> it's, you know, it's one of those things. It's uh, everything happens for a reason. Right. But um, I was a psychology major in college. Um, so that's what my degree is in. I have a degree in a uh, bachelor's degree in psychology. And um, I had decided that I didn't want to go to graduate school. And so my parents, uh, when I, I told my parents that I wasn't going to go to graduate school, I was going to graduate from college and then go out into the workforce. But there's not a lot you can do with a bachelor's degree in psychology. And um, so my parents said, that's great. That's fine. Whatever you want to do. Um, but you got to get a job. And so it was about March of my senior year in college. And I was on the phone with a friend of mine from high school 
And I was telling her that my parents were starting to really get on my case about getting a job, <laughs> right? And, uh, <laughs> and I didn't have any idea what I was going to do. I had no idea what to do. And so she said, uh, she turns around and says, well, why don't you call my dad? And I, I, I was confused. I was like, why would I call your dad? And she said, well, he's starting a new show. Her father owned a production company. Um, and he was starting up a new show and she said, call him if he's got an open spot for a production assistant, a PA, which is an entry level job, you know, he'll hire you for that. You don't need any experience to do a PA job. And, uh, at least then you can tell your parents you've got a job and they'll get off your case. Right. And so I did. So I called her dad and he asked when I could start and I told him when I was graduating. And so six days after I graduated from college, I started my first job working as a production assistant in TV and it was super not glamorous. You know, I was carrying heavy cases of equipment around and driving vans and getting coffee orders and, and <laughs> picking up lunch for people and yeah, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but it was, it was fun. Um, and I got to do some interesting things. And so after that job, I got another job in, in, in the, in the television industry and media. And then I got another job and then I got another job and I just kept doing it, um, and worked my way up over time. So, so that's really kind of how it happened. Um, I've always had a passion for photography. Um, so my parents gave me my first, uh, 35 millimeter still camera, um, for my birthday when I was 13 years old. And, um, I just kind of fell in love with creating imagery, uh, and telling stories through imagery. And so, um, no matter what projects I worked on, I, I most mostly worked as a producer. Um, but no matter what projects I worked on, I always found a reason to have a camera in my hand at some point. So pretty much every project I've worked on, there's some piece of some episode of that show that I shot. Um, uh, because I just couldn't help myself. And so, uh, at a later point in my career where I decided I wanted to step away from show running, that it wasn't really, um, uh, a job that I wanted to pursue or, or a career path that I wanted to pursue any longer. I turned my attention on, uh, working as a, as a DP, as a director of photography. And, um, and that's actually what led to the Emmy nomination. So, um, turns out it was, that was a good path. I like to say I went out of the TV industry on a high note. I don't really work in TV anymore, mm. uh, but I uh, went out of that industry on a high note. It was right, right, right at the end of that career where where uh, I was fortunate enough to be nominated for those uh, Emmy awards. So, yeah, I I researched you. I saw, <laughs> <laughs> I saw your IMDb uh, page. It's very impressive. And there's no bio. You're so modest. You well, so so I don't know if that's I I can't it's not big enough on my screen. It's hard for me to see, but, oh. um, if that's, uh, okay. yeah. So I did not work on days of our lives. That's a different Tom Langan. What? Yeah. <laughs> that's a, a different, different Tom Langan. Yeah. yeah. If you notice, he started working on, on days of our lives in like, uh, 1973 or, and oh. young and the restless in 1973. Oh, I wasn't born even yet. born yet. <laughs> so, so yeah. Okay. So that's right, somebody we'll else. All right. We'll yeah. take it off. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, but you have a nice uh, website now. So, and, and I do, I do have an IMDb page. Oh, it's just not that me. one. Send yeah. It to me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll pull yeah. it up. And I'll send you the link. Uh, oh, you know what? Apparently, there is a, a few uh, um, Tom Lang in there. When I try to uh, tweet you, like finding you on the Twitter, there's like so many of them. Like. If you don't uh, know. Yeah, so I don't use yeah. my my username on Twitter is not Tom Langan. It's it's yeah. Talix Media. Yeah, I know, so, I know. I'm just yeah. saying your name is kind of popular. Yeah. Okay. Which is funny because I didn't know. Um. You know, I I had no idea that there were like you know, especially in television, uh -huh. I had no idea that there were uh you know there were other folks. Yeah. Um. Uh, with the same name. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, but. nobody, nobody has. I don't think there is any Qingzhu out there. I, I doubt it. So, 
I got Chingju at gmail.com. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So in the meantime, I'll, uh, sh uh, when you find it, I'll, I'll put it out. So uh, I just, uh, I just sent it to you in the chat. Oh, oh okay. Sure. Then I can post it. Um, where's my glass? Glass eater. Glasses eater. Okay. Oh, I got your glasses again. Yeah. My, my house <laughs> has a glass e eater and, uh, always, um, I can't find my glasses. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, you don't have any. Yeah. Wait, do you have any? You don't have any uh, bio either, I think. No. Yeah. But I mean, and, and there's actually, there's one other page, and I, I messaged them to try to combine them. There's another page that has some of my other work on it that's oh. not included here for yeah. some reason. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So uh, okay. let me, let me, let me find it. So tell uh, tell people, um, I actually uh, built up my IMDb, I think, uh, after, built more after uh, joining the clubhouse. I did not really know much about it. So tell us what exactly is IMDb. Uh, so IMDb just stands for Internet Movie Database. Um and uh, basically, it was just it started as a way for people to to um, be able to find out who was in particular films or TV shows, who the casts were and stuff like that. And then it expanded out um, into the production crews and staffs. Um, and, it, and essentially what it was, was they were um, they were taking the information from the credits uh, from the credit rolls in film and television shows, and then putting it on a compiling it in a database on a website. Mm -hmm. Um, so the vast majority of the entries here, I didn't actually put in. These are just entries that got put in because, uh, because of my name being listed in a credits in a credit role, mm -hmm. um, for a show that I worked on. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so it's, I don't know. I, I, I haven't done much with it to be perfectly honest. Oh. Um, and, and maybe I should do more with it, but most yeah. of this is just because, uh, uh, just because my name was in the credits. And so, oh. so I get credit on IMDB for it. Um, and then I, you know, uh, you're, believe me, you are not the first person to think that I, uh, that I worked on young and the restless. Um, uh, I actually, I was doing, uh, as you can, if you scroll down, you can see I was a, I was a casting director, um, on a series called moving up yeah. uh, for a season. I cast, uh, 39 families for, uh, that 13 episode season. Wow. And when I was out, um, doing a, a series of casting interviews for that show, one of the people had Googled me, found my IMDB, found an IMDB page with my name and thought. I was this guy who used to be an executive producer of a huge soap opera was coming to her house. And all she could think about was what happened. <laughs> and she said to me when I walked, she was like, you are not who I, cause I clearly wasn't the guy. Cause I'm not old enough. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and my beard then wasn't gray yeah. um, like it is now. And, and so she, yeah. So she was like, she was like, uh, all I could think about, all I was wondering while I was waiting for you to get here was what happened that now he's out doing casting for a cable TV sh series when he used to be the executive producer of this huge. <laughs> and uh, degraded, yeah, uh, downgrade. Yeah. She, was like, she was like, what happened? So then I showed up and she was like, Oh, you're clearly not that guy. And I was like, no, I've never even worked on uh, a soap opera. So yeah. Yeah. That's um, funny. yeah. 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 It was, it was pretty, it was, we had a good laugh over it. Um, and then I did not cast her for the show, uh -huh. but uh, she had, that's not why um, it just yeah. coincidentally, she wasn't a good fit for the show. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but yeah, so it, it, it all depends. Um, Interesting. So IMDb, uh, do they upload, uh, uh, update it by robot or human being uh, d does that? So I think it's a combination of both. Um, I think they, I think, you know, a lot of the update comes uh, automatically. Okay. Um, but uh, I think they also, um, I think they also do it uh, uh, 
manually. So you can appeal to them to change things, add things, yeah. um, take things out, you know, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. The appeal takes a long time because I want to change my name, you know? Uh, anyway, so yeah, enough of, uh, IMDB. Uh, I'm going to take this off now. Um, yeah. So, so now tell us a little bit, um, what segue for you uh, to do all the media and then you left the television. Uh, you are doing something very meaningful right now and you have a website. Tell us uh, uh, what you are pursuing right now, please. Sure. So, I mean, the reason why I left, um, I'll, I'll start with the reason why I left, uh, sort of the, left the television industry. Um, and really what it came down to was I, you know, Initially, when I started working in television, I was having a ton of fun. I was learning a lot. I was getting to do a lot of really interesting things. I was getting to travel a lot. Um, and I worked my way up the ladder and ultimately became a series producer and showrunner. And so I was overseeing um, uh, episodic television production kind of from start to finish. So uh, everything from concept development and ideation through the production process to staffing and crewing and uh, leading the production uh, on to final delivery to the network. And, and I, I looked around, I got to that point. It was sort of like I was, you know, I was climbing this ladder. I spent years climbing this ladder and I gotten, you know, pretty close to the top of the ladder in terms of where you can go in a production path. And I looked around and I realized that I didn't know why I was climbing the ladder anymore. Um, that I wasn't really having a lot of fun anymore and I didn't really love what I was doing. Um, and, and so I decided that with that in mind, it probably wasn't a good idea to continue doing it. Um, and, and, and the other side of it was that, um, over the course of that career, like I said, you know, I got to travel all over the world, which has been incredible. Um, and I very much, uh, am grateful for the opportunities that I've had to be able to travel and experience different parts of the world. Um, you know, everything from, uh, you know, uh, flying in, you know, military helicopters in the Arctic circle, um, to, uh, hand feeding a panda bear in Chengdu, China, um, mm -hmm. just incredible opportunities all over the world. Um, but I was spending on average about six months out of every year away from home and some years more than that. So, you know, out of that, about 17 years that I spent in television production, I was gone for about nine years when you add it up. And that's wow. a long time to be away. Wow. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I decided that, um, uh, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to a change of pace. And so I started pulling back from producing working as I started working as a DP and then looking for, uh, opportunities to take the skill set that I had developed over the course of that career and put it, to use somewhere else. And I realized pretty quickly that there's a huge need for better communication um, for businesses. Uh, it, I think the way that businesses talk to or communicate with the communities that they seek to serve is broken in a lot of ways. And I want to fix it. So I want to, I want to help businesses or what I'm working to do right now. And what I do with my legendary strategy is I help businesses build better relationships with their communities um, so that their community benefits and they benefit in turn as well. Um, you know, sort of, it's sort of a li uh, rising tide lifts all boats philosophy um, that's built off of an exchange of value and follows going back all the way back to my, uh, my psychology degree follows something called the rule of reciprocation, which is part of the social contract. And it's a, it's a social rule that we all adhere to. So, so yeah, so that's, that's what I'm doing now. So in specific, um, this is all sound very good in specific, say, who are your clients? For instance, are, there, are they individuals or are they organizations? The organizations, typically, yeah. Uh, unless that there's a, you know, I, I don't have any individuals uh, as clients. If there was an individual who had a personal brand, 
um, that would be somebody that we could work with for sure um, in, in, in uh, executing a legendeering strategy for them. Um, but typically our clients are our businesses, our organizations. So, um, you know, we like to work with uh, mission driven organizations um, and uh, non nonprofits. And then I'm in the process of putting together a social enterprise side of the business as well so that we can give back and help uh, early stage entrepreneurs and young businesses um, do a better job of creating good content and forging those relationships early on, uh, even though they can't necessarily afford to hire a company like mine to do it for them. Mm, I see. Do you work, uh, uh, consider, would consider work for a, uh, like a political entity, like, like the third party? <laughs> I mean, I, I have done. Just, I've, just I've hypothetically done some, thinking. <laughs> I've done some commercial production okay. for political campaigns. Oh, okay, um, okay. So I'm not. I'm not adverse to that at all. But I also would not uh, work with a politician um, who I didn't align with on values. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. The reason I ask is, you know, I was thinking, you know, Andrew Yen started his third party. You know, have you heard about that? Yeah. 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 Do you have yeah. an opinion or not? Or you don't want to talk about? It? <laughs> I'm fine to talk about it. I think I actually think um, I, I agree with him that we do need a viable third party. Mm. Um, I also think that um, I think that he's trying to appeal too broadly. Mm. Right. I think the problem that he's going to run into is the group that he's trying to appeal to isn't a block. Mm. Right. There are a lot of, you know, he's trying to appeal to independence. Well, like independents are independent for a variety of reasons. Mm. It's not, they don't vote as a block. Right. And so I think he's going to have a really hard time trying to build a coalition of very disparate voices and kind of trying to bring them under one tent. Um, so I don't know how successful he's going to be. He's not the first person that's tried, but I do agree that a viable third party would be a positive thing for our democracy overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully he'll um, unite some of the Republicans, you know, and because in, within Republican state, uh, people are, are not the same, right? Some are more leaning to right, more leaning to left, more in the center. So, I think he made some uh, Twitter statement about Trump's, you know, Mar-a-Lago home being searched by FBI, and and his his comment actually uh, is like it's less praise the government, you know what I mean? So then it it got it got some backlash, yeah, from, from people who are on the right, you know. So. Well, yeah, I mean, I just, uh, well, his, I think he was saying that he didn't, he thought it was a bad precedent to set. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I mean, personally, I think, look, if we're going to live in a country of laws, then no one is above the law. And if, um, if the FBI had probable cause, which they had to have, and they had to have a judge sign off on in order to search Mar-a-Lago the way they did, um, you know, then, then that's what they had to do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, it, I don't know where it's going to lead mm -hmm. and I don't know what's going to come of it, but you know, you got to follow the letter of the law, mm -hmm. right? If, mm -hmm. if there's probable cause that a crime was committed and that they had to search the premises, um, and that they had reason to believe that evidence of that crime was on premises then, and that they did because that's because a judge agreed and said, okay, yes, you've got a good reason to do this. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Um, so it wasn't. It wasn't a random, uh, you know, it wasn't a random, um, you know, thing. It wasn't politically motivated, I don't believe at all. Um, so, yeah. So I think, uh, you know, uh, we'll see where it leads, mm -hmm. but no one's above the law. And that includes, that doesn't matter whether you're a uh, current president, former president, running for president, sitting in Congress. I don't care. Mm -hmm. you're, you, we're all beholden to the same laws. Mm -hmm. Right. We all uh, are, are follow the same constitution and enjoy the same constitutional protections. Um, right. And, uh, and no one, no one gets special treatment period. Right. Exactly. So um, yeah. Thank you for 
for touch this uh issue with me and um sure. here is your handsome website about Thanks. your service yeah so you so i've never heard the word legendary so tell us a little bit sure i mean that's because i made it up <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's not a it's not oh a real God. word. I googled it. Uh, I couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a real word. It's yeah. it's my word. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I I thought it was a good it was a good phrase to sort of capture really the essence of what this strategy is all about, and it's about um, engineering legend around brands, mm -hmm. right, and businesses and organizations, and and the way we do that is by using value driven content to uh, deliver value to an audience, to a community for a business, right? And then by branding that content to the business, we provide them the opportunity to return that value to the brand. Mm -hmm. So the way I like to explain this, this is the, this is the rule of reciprocation that I was talking about. So mm -hmm. the way I like to explain it is, um, uh, you know, by using an analogy, because anybody that knows me knows I'm, I'm a huge fan of analogies. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the one I go to for this is we've all been in um, a situation very similar to this. You're out to dinner with a friend, you get towards the end of the meal, and your friend grabs the check and says, I got this dinners on me. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you do the dance back and forth, right. You do the polite dance. You go, oh, come on, you don't have to do that. Let me, let me at least cover the tip or I'll, I'll get the drinks. Right. I hate people say so cover the, that's so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll pay my half or, you Either know, you like whatever. Pay or you don't pay. Yeah. Don't cover but, the tip. <laughs> but, but you do the, but, but people do the polite dance, right. You uh, do the, yeah. you do the dance back and forth. Yeah. And then uh, ultimately you give in and you make two decisions actually side by side. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't realize you're making two decisions, but you are. And those decisions yeah. are first to accept the gift, right? So you say, okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you for dinner. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you say your second decision comes out in the same breath. You say, but the next one yeah. or the next time yeah. it's on me. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that's your decision to reciprocate. Yeah. So um, what we're doing with legendering is we're following that rule of reciprocation. Right. Yeah. So yeah. in essence, what we do is we we help businesses develop value driven content, contents that's designed to deliver value mm -hmm. to their audience that's not associated with their products or services. Mm -hmm. Right. So independent of their products or services delivers value to their audience or to their community that they seek to serve. And then by branding that, that, uh, that video or that content, that value to their business, we, in essence, buy dinner for their community, right? With that value. Mm -hmm. And then by branding it, we provide the opportunity for their community to, to buy them dinner in return. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's, that's what legendering is all about. It's about um, a, a value exchange, building story around your brand, building legend around your brand, uh, and and building a reputation of being a business that is interested first in helping your community, right, and profits second. Because mm. um, I 100% believe that if you uh, if you deliver value mm -hmm. to your audience, that value will be returned to you. And, and the rule of reciprocation, you know, bears that out. Um, and it's something that's, in, that's embedded in all of us, right? Um, so I, I like to use this example for anybody who's a parent, right? Or anybody that's been around parents and young children, right? They've seen something like this, mm -hmm. a parent handing something to their very, very young child, right? To their baby, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Who can't even talk yet handing them something and saying to that baby, and now you say thank you, right? Or words to that effect, right? And what they're doing is they're teaching that baby who can't even speak yet. They're teaching that baby that when someone gives you something, mm -hmm. you give them gratitude in return, 
right? Because at its core, the rule of, recipro the rule of reciprocation says that you cannot take or you cannot receive without giving in return. And so it's so embedded in us that we actually learn to follow this rule before we can even speak. Mm -hmm. Right. And so yeah. all we're doing with legendeering is following that rule and using that existing construct in society to help businesses serve their communities and help communities support businesses that do that. So are you calling yourself a um, consultant or how, how, how do you describe, are you making a uh, media for them? Yeah, no, we're a full service media production company. Okay. So, so yeah, so we, we handle uh, all phases of production from concept development and ideation all the way through the process uh, to delivery of the final product. So mm -hmm. we don't do distribution. Um, so we're not a marketing company. We don't handle channel distribution. Um, you know, we don't manage uh, social media accounts or anything like that. Um, we do, but we, we handle all aspects of content production. So, and media production. So the company uses your services. They, they, it's a short video, right? Or it's a long video. No. So legendary is actually built off of uh, long form episodic content. Oh, okay. um, so typically, uh, the content that we look to produce, um, for these clients, uh, is, starts at like 10 to 15 minutes in duration. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, kind of that's that, that duration is, is a good place to start for, for YouTube, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the most popular, um, uh, uh, duration of video, mm -hmm. um, on YouTube is somewhere around 17 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, so anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes is kind of a good ballpark to be in. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, and then what we do is we repackage and repurpose that content into shorter form pieces of content into different pieces of media um, so that those can be distributed across multiple channels to help drive audience to the centerpiece episode. Mm, okay, very good. <clears throat> uh, Shockfin uh, Tech uh, said, can you see it? Yep. Is it true? Yeah, I mean, it does. It there. Again, it, this is a, this, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. This is a social construct that has been around for, you know, probably as long as civilized society has existed or, you know, uh, organized society has existed. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it is that kind of principle. Shark Fintech is right on the, right on the nose. It is that kind of principle that you have to lead with value for your community. It has to be about your audience, not about you. And most businesses get that wrong and they make their content all about them, right? Like, I don't know how many times I've seen a video, a marketing video from a business that starts with, we do this and we do that and we do, right? And it's all about them. And the problem is that nobody cares right? Because they haven't delivered value. They haven't shown up for their community. They haven't given anybody a reason to care about them yet, right? So you can't lead with that kind of content. You have to establish a relationship first. And the way you do that is by simply, in essence, asking people, um, g delivering value for them by sort of asking questions, right? So you start with, um, you know, your content should start with, this is what's, you know, uh, this is designed for you. This is about you. It's about, it's about our audience. It's about our community. It's about that. Not about me. It should be about you. Right. Um, and, and it's like that for public speaking, right. For anybody that's ever done public speaking, if you get up on a stage in front of a group of people, you better be up there to deliver for that audience. Mm -hmm. Because if you're up there for yourself, no one's going to pay attention. Mm. Right. You have to be up there to deliver for the audience. And this is, this is also, um, uh, same as, uh, speaking in a uh, clubhouse. Right. And I've been on clubhouse for a while, <clears throat> a year and a half. Um, what, you know, what, uh, attracts to me to certain rooms, uh, are the rooms are people are offering their expertise or making critique of certain things. They're, they're not just like 
preaching and then say buy my product you know like they they try to sell their workshop and stuff like that so um wh what what made you to go on clubhouse do you find it's helpful uh to reach your audience or i mean you're very uh, articulated and you certainly uh, attracted me to wanting to interview you and you. yeah so tell me a little bit about how you feel uh, clubhouse is um you know useful for you or a good platform yeah, I mean, I think Clubhouse has been great for me to help grow my community, right? Um, and, and that's that's what I'm all about. Um, at, at the end of the day, building a business, right? Uh, growing a community. I mean, you know, Talix Media has really only been around for about three and a half years. So it's a very, very young business. Um, and building a business is all about um, at least a long-term sustainable business. This is my opinion, um, is all about building a community. Right at the end of the day, um, I am Talix Media for now. Right, so when I show up on Clubhouse, I am bound and determined to lead with value and to make sure that everybody that comes into that room with Dominic and I leaves having gained for the experience. Right, that is the goal. That is what we set out to do every Wednesday morning when we open up that room is to make sure that everybody that comes in is better off for having been there, right? Um, in, in maybe just because they get a laugh because Dominic I, and I like to give each other a hard time sometimes. Um, maybe it's because uh, they learn from one of the other amazing people that comes into that space. You know, uh, Dr. Tachi is amazing. She is incredibly accomplished. She's in there every week. Um, you know, there's tons of tons of, uh, Julie who's in there this morning, Michael Lozier, uh, who's in there most weeks. Um, you know, lots of really yourself, um, lots of really accomplished, uh, experts who are in that space as well, um, sharing their knowledge. But that's, that's the goal is we just, we want to help, uh, we want to help people. We want to, you know, give people, um, tools, to be able to uh, accomplish the things they want to accomplish. And, and so that's, that's why we're there. And I think that's why I enjoy being there so much in that space um, with, with all of you that come through every week is because I love, absolutely love, there's nothing better for me than to know that um, my, sh me sharing my experience and my expertise has helped somebody. Cause it's easy for me to do. It's such a light lift, right? Like it's just all rattling around in my head. All I have to do is open my mouth and let it fall out. <laughs> yeah. And you, you could do it, you know, with, without looking very good or no clothes on. <laughs> Not, no, 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 I can't because we live stream it. Oh really? We live stream. Yeah. Yeah. We live stream it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that. that, that room, that room gets live streamed. So I'm on camera, Dominic's on camera. Oh. And then we have a window, um, uh, that has the actual clubhouse room on, on camera as well. So oh. we're on camera for that whole room every week. So yeah, I can't, I didn't can't know do that. it in my underwear. Oh, so, <laughs> so it's, it's a podcast. I mean, kind of, yeah, it's a live stream. We do it as a weekly live stream. Uh, and then it's the clubhouse room as well. And then replays oh, are on. Where and you, where do you broadcast to? Uh, so, uh, we use a different platform. Uh, so right now we're on StreamYard. We use Restream. Um, so it's very similar feature sets, just slightly different. Um, but uh, we broadcast on Facebook, Instagram, or not not Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, um, uh, Twitter, and Twitch. Oh my um, god! But it's on it's on both of our channels. So oh. that's one of the unique things about Restream is they let you pair channels. So oh, wow. I have the Restream account, but then Dominic uh, can pair his channels as well. So it's on my Facebook and his Facebook, mm -hmm. my YouTube and his YouTube, oh. right? Um, my Twitter and his Twitter. Okay. So yeah, so we can we can kind of cross share and, and spread it out to more folks that way. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So check out uh, Tom's social media. It's the same handle, right? Yep. I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah, I had no idea uh, you're you're doing a live stream. That's why also 
um, when you do live streaming, you need to be more disciplined. And uh, that's why your show is so tight. I can see it now. I can visualize it. Yeah, very tight. There's no no room to chit chat. Yeah, well, and we like to keep things moving, right? Yeah, and yeah. and at the end of the day, you know, I'm very aware of, and I know Dominic is too. We're very aware of the fact that, you know, time is valuable, and people are choosing to give us and share a, a bit of their time with us. Um, and we want to make sure that people get the most out of that time that we're mm -hmm. not wasting it. Um, so yeah, so we're, we, we try to keep it moving, um, try to keep it interesting and, uh, do our best to make sure. I, I think, I don't think we've failed on this yet. Um, but yeah, make sure that everybody who gets on stage gets a chance to speak. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Clubhouse, uh, Wednesday, what time? Wednesday at 9 30 AM Eastern. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Clubhouse Wednesday nine a.m. Yeah. yeah, and the name of the the name of the room is Clubhouse uh, Publishing, Podcasting, and Social Media. Yeah, check it out, and just follow Tom first, then you'll be yeah. notified. So yeah. for those of you, I tell you guys, for those of you, if you have uh, heard of Clubhouse, you're you're behind. So <laughs> <laughs> please come to Clubhouse. <laughs> I live on Clubhouse. <laughs> yeah. So my address is Clubhouse now. And <laughs> <laughs> I learned so much. I met so many awesome people. So I want to thank a couple of people at the audience. Um, Shockfin. Shockfin also has a real name. His name is Mark. And uh, earlier, my friend Sam uh, was here. I don't know if Sam's still here. But for those of you, uh, your name is not showing here. is because partially, you have to have like a uh, YouTube account to make comments, you know. So some people are just listening and uh, you don't see, you know, they're, they're, they're here. Um, yeah. So, Tom, you... Uh, you do so many things. Yeah? You're a media person, you're kind of an educator, and you're an athlete. So tell us a little bit about how do you train your body? How do you do this like discipline thing? Every single day you have an Instagram, just talk about uh, your exercise every day. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm an amateur athlete. Uh, I just want to make sure that that's clear. <laughs> Um, You're not getting paid to run. <laughs> no, I do not get paid for it. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm uh, I'm an amateur uh, triathlete in in the triathlete community. Uh, we were referred to as age groupers, um, and uh, so yeah, so I'm an age group triathlete, um, and uh, really kind of got started in in 2018. Um, signed up for my first triathlon, uh, after I, I got into cycling and in, I think around 2016, I got into cycling and then started running as well. Uh, Becky, my partner is a runner. Um, and, uh, and so got into running a little bit as well. And, uh, you know, looking for ways to sort of make myself a little bit healthier. Um, I had spent a long time, uh, most of that career in TV, I was, I was drinking a lot of diet Coke and smoking a lot of cigarettes. So, um, <laughs> I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I was looking for ways to sort of, uh, uh, you know, create some healthier habits and so got involved in triathlon and, and, uh, I'm one of those kind of people. I don't do anything sort of halfway. Um, so once I started, uh, I did a, a short course triathlon, a sprint first, and then, um, quickly moved up into longer distances and eventually did my first Ironman triathlon last year. And then I'm doing my second Ironman in, uh, about 10 days, uh, on August 21st, uh, 11 days, actually on August 21st. And, um, and so, yeah, so what I decided to do this year, um, was to do a daily vlog of my Ironman training to sort of take take people along on the journey with me. Uh, and I really did it for two reasons. One was to create accountability for myself. So if I made a commitment and I said it out loud and I put it out on the internet and put it out to the world that I was gonna I was gonna post a video every day, then I damn well better show up and post a video every day, right? And then the other side of it was, um, that it was sincerely my hope that someone else might see me going through this process, um, and, and take some inspiration from it. 
um, and, and, you know, maybe get involved in triathlon or, or get involved in some athletic pursuit on their own. So, so yeah, so that, that's really what it was all about. And so every day, um, after I do my training, um, I, I create a short vlog video. I typically, it's just me talking to the camera, kind of telling you how things went, what I did, how it went, um, any insights or thoughts or whatever, um, uh, going on. And, uh, yeah. And I post it every day. So I post it on, uh, Instagram and LinkedIn and TikTok and, uh, Twitter every day. Um, do you do it at the same time or like one first and then after hour you do another one do you, do so you do it at the same time? Yeah. I'm way less deliberate than that. Um, but I typically post it to Instagram first because I like the style of, uh, there, this is truly the reason this is, uh, fully peeling back the curtain here. Um, I like the style of the, uh, of the subtitling in Instagram the best. Um, and so what I do is I post it to Instagram first and then I download it from Instagram, um, without any logos or anything on it, but with the subtitles. And then I use that downloaded video to then post cross post. Um, but I often just kind of do it one right after the other. Um, cause, cause I, you know, like if, if I put it off just the way my brain works, there's no way that I'm going to post it now. And then in an hour post to the next, but it's just not going to happen. So I just have to just do it. Yeah. Um, and, and so typically I'll post it on Instagram and then download it and then immediately post it on the other platforms. So when you do a reel, it's live on Instagram, but can you like say just the video yourself first without any logo, then post on different platform? Can you do that? So on Instagram, I don't, I don't do the videos live. So I record the videos okay. and then I post them. So I actually use, I don't have it with me. It's downstairs, but, um, uh, and I'm up in my office right now, but, uh, but I use, uh, a GoPro, uh, hero nine, um, that I have oriented vertically, um, with, uh, a shotgun microphone. Um, so I use that to record the videos every day. And then the nice thing about using a GoPro is not only is the image quality really nice, uh, it's better than the front facing camera on my phone, but then also I can easily transfer the video to my phone, uh, wirelessly. Right. So then I, I transfer the, 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 the media to my phone. I can then directly from my phone, upload it to Instagram as a reel. Mm -hmm. And then I put captions on it and I put a, a, a little title box on it. Um, oh, yeah. and, and yeah. then, yeah. And then I'll, and then on my desktop, I'll on my laptop, actually I'll download it, um, from Instagram on my laptop and then I'll send it to my phone again. Uh, That's and then I'll, work. <laughs> it's actually, I just kind of do it in the background while I'm doing other things in the okay. evening. So, okay. and I usually post them in the evening. That's usually when I get around to it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not, it's, it, it sounds complicated. There's a bunch of steps, but they're all mm -hmm. pretty, pretty mm -hmm. quick. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's so cool. Do you have a, um, very uh sort of uh, uh, created a uh, curated uh, youtube channel uh i don't i don't oh, i am definitely okay. uh i'm definitely the uh the the cobbler with no shoes yeah um if you're familiar with that term so basically yeah. uh yeah i'm i'm the i'm the shoemaker who doesn't make shoes for himself <laughs> so so i'm the i'm the Bare media foot. producer yeah i'm the media producer that doesn't make content for himself as much as he should so <laughs> i'm trying to get better about that and one yeah. of the things that i'm trying to do is i'm trying to treat my business i'm trying to treat talix media more like a client um than than a uh you know Server. yeah Server. yeah mm -hmm. but i'm trying to treat them more like a client um so that uh, I, I spend some time and actually create good content uh, for the business and, and curate content for the business. So, um, I, you know, most of what's on my YouTube channel is actually uh, uh, our live streams um, with Dom and I. Mm. So, yeah. So your YouTube channel also is the same, right? As this. Uh, yep. Uh, as Kendo. Now, who did your website? It's really good. I did. Whoa. Did you use like a what Wix or? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you think Wix is one of the best? 
Uh, you know, it's honestly, it's the one I've used. Okay. So I haven't used, I don't have experience with like Squarespace or any of the other sort of, uh, website building, okay. um, uh, web-based, uh, software programs, but, yeah. but yeah, it's what I used. Um, okay. and, uh, yeah, I just, you know, kind of put it to work, put that, put that, uh, that, that aesthetic mind to yeah. work, uh, that I use in production for the website. Um, yeah. I but uh, like yeah, and I designed my logo too. But yeah. uh, I've had people ask me; they're like, oh, "I really like your logo. Would yeah. you design design you one?" Made for it, me? You made up the word again. No, the italics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so I can tell. I can tell you. So it doesn't mean anything, but I can tell you where it comes from. Where does it come from? Okay, so if you notice on the logo, like the 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 Roman numerals down here, yeah, right, yeah, uh, actually say two thousand and seven. Okay. 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 So in like 2000. That's when you're born. No, no, <laughs> I was kidding. not born in 2007. <laughs> I'm just uh, kidding. Um, <laughs> when a uh, little bit older than that, um, <laughs> just a just a skosh. Um, uh, but yeah, so in 2006, uh, a friend of mine and I had an idea for a business, mm -hmm. and like people in their 20s, um, we didn't actually do anything with the idea. Um, other than come up with a name for the business. Right. And then a year later I was working for MTV at the time and I was, uh, they hired me as an independent contractor and I needed to form an LLC, um, for tax purposes. And so I called my friend and I said, Hey, do you mind if I use the name we came up with? I really like it. I got to form this LLC. Is it cool with you if I use it? And he said, yeah, it's totally fine with me. I'm never going to do anything with it go for it. It's all yours. So I formed in 2007, I formed Talix Media LLC. Um, and that was initially formed as a, as a, as a, uh, way to work as an independent contractor for tax purposes. Um, but, uh, really it was just, uh, the way we came up with it was my name's Tom and his name is Alex. And we oh. mashed our names together and came up with Talix and we just oh. thought it had a cool ring to it yeah. and it sounded good. Yeah. And so that's what we decided to use. Alex. Um, and then we never did anything with it. So then I used it for my business name and yeah. here we are. But yeah, I, I, I noticed your, your, your business name. It's, it's very easy to remember actually, even it's another word and, and, and it sounds very good, you know, like the <laughs> syllabus, right? Yeah. Ta and then la, right. And then X, you know, talix and it's easy to remember. And yeah. Yeah. And so I just, uh, I just did something like um, a month ago. Uh, I finally incorporated myself, <laughs> incorporated myself. And yep. I, I was thinking what name to use, right? So I, uh, you want to hear the story? Uh, it's Absolutely. about you, I'm telling you my story. Uh, so I want to combine my music, like teaching, right? Um, coaching. And then video service, right? Video or film or whatever do I do with the media in a one entity because it's too complicated to have two websites, uh, you know, to explain to people what I do. So so I formed a, uh, yeah, I incorporated LLC uh, as a, uh, like a multiple members, you know, so I, I do have my partner. And then uh, I named it... Um, what that name? Oh, Studio Sun Ching. And ask me why. Why? <laughs> well, uh, studio, I think it's a good good word, right? Studio can be a, a, a music studio or television studio or any studio or your home with a desk. That's a studio. Studio is a very general word. And Sun is actually my father's last name. Like I used to be Sun Ching, you know, in Chinese, it's like mm -hmm. last name first, uh, second, you know, you've been China, Sun Ching. Yep. And then during Cultural Revolution, my mother uh, changed my name to Chen Ching, Chen, Chen is her name, because my father was sentenced as people's enemy. He he was put in the prison and whatever. So it's all because Cultural Revolution. Yeah. So gotcha. I always feel like I owe my father, you know, I always feel kind of i don't know uh so finally i say okay i'm paying back you know i'm gonna use his name in my uh 
business entity. So that's, that's the story. Cool. I like yeah. it. A little long though, right? Studio <laughs> Sun Ching <laughs> LLC. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So I'm going to build a website. So I'm, I'm going to use uh, Wix. But anyway, uh, it's almost uh, six o'clock. And yep. uh, yeah, anything else I have, we have not touched. You wanted to uh, mention? Uh, I don't think so. Does anybody else? Uh, any any other? Yeah. yeah, any other oh, yeah. questions we from can the ask a, in ask the, a, uh, watching the live stream? Yeah. So, um, look, Nick is here. Nick is my uh, partner when we uh, did a, a canvassing for Andrew Yen oh, okay. uh, in my film. Yeah. And my, my film called My Young Gun Diary. And then some people say you should call Nick and Ching <laughs> because he and I, we appear so many places, so many states. Uh, Nick and also Sam is also my young gun, um, you know, comrade. And, uh, and Shark Fin, um, Shark Fin is my huge supporter on, on many, many platforms, what I do. Do you guys have any questions for Tom? Before we do our uh, our rapid fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool! And I see Nick said he uh, he he's he's set up to join our our clubhouse room on uh, on the twenty fourth. So oh, that's cool. Cool. Yeah. 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 So Nick Rivera. Yeah, he's very yep. vocal and he's uh, he's very um, how do I say um, very sharp politically. Cool. Also, yeah, he has a degree in religion and history. <laughs> Useless degree. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> anyway, okay, can we see an example like a short clip of Tom's work? Uh, does he produce commercials? Yeah, you have one, right? Yeah, so if if you guys, uh, I think the easiest thing to do yeah. uh, is, is uh, to website. just go to the website. Yeah. Um, and there are a bunch of examples of our work on the website on talixmedia.com. I like um, that helicopter one. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that's, that's a, that's a video that I did for, uh, a company, uh, up here called independent helicopters. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So if you go, go back Ching, um, cause that's not going to play it there. Oh. Um, okay. What do I do? Uh, so if you scroll down, oh. Uh, it'll show some of our work. Oh, you give it a second to load. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, nope. Go back up a little bit. It should show our work. Hold on one second. It's kind of acting a little bit funny. Yeah, there oh, you yeah. go. I need an arrow. Yeah, yeah. So if you click there, it was love at first flight. Let's make it bigger. Battery on. How do I make it bigger? I became addicted to altitude. Pictures full rich. Yeah, it should be right there. Of What's it? The sky. I can't make it bigger. Area's clear. I fell in love with the ability to see our world from a whole new perspective. I mean, I can't, I can't oh. see what it's showing you on your screen. So. Oh, if I can fly, I can do anything. From that first flight, I knew that this is what I was meant to do. Flying isn't just a passion; it's who I am. I am a pilot. I am free. I am independent helicopters. That's so cool. Yeah, that's so cool. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, so that's uh, that was one of the first pieces I did when I started uh, Talix Media as a production company. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, uh, I, I think it stands up. Um, and, uh, I know that, uh, the Heather, the owner of that company, um, uh, who I'm still in touch with, uh, you know, she, she uses that, um, often as an intro when she does public speaking, um, she'll show that she'll have them play that video before she comes out. And then she likes to come out and ask now who wants to go for a ride in a helicopter. And like everybody always raises all their hand. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So Sam has a question for you. Sure. Uh, value focused content with the need for short form content. So, uh, so two things I think. Um, so 
I think that there is an overemphasis on short form content, right? And what I mean by that is that I think there's a, a bit of a bit of a misunderstanding about what's really going on with short form content. I think a lot of people there's this popular popular thought that I hear all the time uh, that I'm sure Ching you've heard and anybody watching has heard that uh, people don't have attention spans anymore, right? We hear that all the time. And, and I would push back against that. And I would say, actually, a behavioral trait like an atten your attention span, your ability to focus on things is not something that changes uh, in the course, like from one generation to the next or in the course of one person's lifetime, right? It's not really how it works. Uh, biologically, psych psychologically speaking, it's not how it works. So it's not that attention spans have necessarily gotten shorter. It's two things. It's that uh, we are bombarded by a lot more things. There's a lot more stuff competing for our attention. And attention is platform dependent. It's contextual, right? So if you go on Instagram, you expect to see short form video content, right? If you're looking at video content on Instagram, you have an expectation that that content will be short form. But if you go to YouTube, you're going to stick around and you might watch an hour long live stream, right? You might watch a 20 minute video without even thinking twice about it. You'll also on a weekend, uh, sit down in front of your, your TV or your computer and watch, uh, an entire series on Netflix back to back to back, right? So you have an attention span. We have attention spans. It's not that we don't have attention spans. It's that attention span is platform dependent. So you don't need short form content uh, only, right? You need actually longer form content and then you can repackage and repurpose that longer form content into short form content to use to drive audience to the episode, the longer form episode on a platform like YouTube. So you create, and, and you see like big YouTube creators do this all the time. People with huge multi-million uh, uh, member YouTube channels, right? What you'll see is that they're present on Instagram, they're present on TikTok, they're present on Facebook. And what they're doing is they're taking clips from their longer form content that they post on YouTube and they're sharing it there and then telling people where they can get the full episode, right? And driving traffic to YouTube. So, so that's, so I don't think you need, um, I, I think it's easy to balance value focused content with short form content because you just make longer form value focused content and then create short form promotional content out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's very true. And today you talk about a lot about repurposing, repurposing at the room. Um, I, 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 right. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's very valuable, although it's not my first time hearing it, but I'm not doing it. I always feel self-conscious. I feel, oh, I already posted on Facebook. Now I'm doing it on Instagram. Now I'm doing it on Twitter. Am I kind of like a pastor, you know? <laughs> nope. Not at all. Yeah. No, not at all. Because first of all, it's not the same audience on all of those platforms, right? Uh, and then second of all, not everybody's going to see it the first time you share it, right? So it might not be new to you, but it's new to someone, right? Mm -hmm. So don't you know, I forget what the statistic is, but a fraction of the people that, um, you know, follow you or like your, uh, page or whatever it is, whatever the, the platform calls it. Right. Um, a lot of them, uh, you know, only show your content to a fraction of the people that follow you. Right. Mm -hmm. So every time you share a piece of content, it's not going to be the same people seeing it. Right. Mm -hmm. It'll be a mix of some of the people that, currently subscribe to or follow you for your content and some new people. So don't be afraid to reshare, repost it. It's not going to be new to you. And that's fine. Cause again, it's not for you. It's not about you. Mm -hmm. It's about your audience, right? It's about your community. Mm -hmm. So, so it doesn't matter if it's new to you or not. Um, so it's not going to be new to you, but it'll be new to somebody. And that's what really matters. Yeah. And your Instagram 
lately uh, has been so consistent, you know, say day 147, day 140, day 30. And what do you think of uh, like people like me? My Instagram is all over the place. You know, it's about music, it's about video, it's about family, it's about cat, it's about, do you think, uh, how do you feel about about people are not in with one theme on their on their social media? I mean, I think I think there is a theme, right? I think the theme is it's things that you're interested in, right? So there is a theme. I think you just maybe just explain that, right? Make that clearer in like in the posts, in the text, when you put them up, right? Talk about what you find interesting about this thing and why you want to share it with people, right? And then and then share it. But if if that but that is consistency. Right. If it's always things that you're passionate about, that's consistent. It's not about it all looking the same. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I film I, I film my my uh, my my daily training vlogs in different places all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't film them all in the same place. It's not like it's just a, a you know, all the same video and and you know, I'm going to keep the vlog going after I finish this race. Um, I'm actually going to be training for a marathon, uh, after this Ironman race. And so I'm going to document that as well. But, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, um, I'll keep doing it wherever, whenever it makes sense for me to do it. Are um, you going to continue the same channel or restart a different channel with the, no, I'll just continue the same channel. It's still my journey. Okay. Right. Yeah, so it's yeah. still, it's still a journey that I'm on that I'm yeah. taking people along for. Right. So it's, it is consistent. Right. Right. Yeah. Fascinating. You're so brave and so thoughtful <laughs> and so smart. <laughs> what do you eat? <laughs> I eat a lot. Because, really? <laughs> well, because I, because I, because of my Ironman training, I eat like three to 4,000 calories a day most days. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Um, wow. yeah. Wow. So I eat a lot. I eat probably like, I mean, I don't know. I, you know, uh, I don't know one and a half times to two times as much as like a normal person does. Mm. Wow. But yeah. And, you, and, and you, you burn a lot of, uh, uh, calories so that. They're yeah. If I didn't, I wouldn't be able to do it. I yeah. have to, I have yeah. to eat a lot or else right. I would, I would yeah. fall apart. Yeah. yeah. So, Okay, it's uh, time to do rapid fire. <laughs> All right. Okay, <laughs> has to be rapid. Uh, what's your favorite color? Orange. Orange. It's awesome. It's awesome. Why do you yeah. Why do you think my logo is orange? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an orange. Orange is yep. very many. Orange is the new black. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, your favorite television uh, series lately? Ooh, lately, Bear. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, on uh, it was an it's an FX series that's on Hulu, and it's I think it's called it's either Bear or The Bear. Um, really interestingly done, um, well acted. Uh, yeah, really cool what, series. What is it has to do with the bear or nothing? Uh, to do no, with it's a, it's about uh, it's about a guy who ends up working in uh, his brother dies and he ends up inheriting his brother's restaurant. He's a chef. Um, and so, yeah, it's, uh, oh. yeah, the bear, it's a good, sh yeah. Nick, Nick says he loves it. It's, it's super interesting. <laughs> it's really well done. Um, wow. so I just, I just finished the first season of it and, uh, uh, yeah, excited to see where it goes next. Wow. I just signed up Hulu yesterday. I'm going to watch it. Uh, cause you know, we have cable. Uh, did you cut your cable yet? Oh, you, oh yeah. Already? Years ago. Years ago. Oh, I haven't cut yet. Yeah, years I, ago. I haven't had cable TV for probably four years. Oh, really? Four or five so years, you yeah. just watch uh, like a network stuff, right? Like yeah, I mean, I watch, I, I have a subscription to Hulu. I have a subscription to Netflix. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, we have Amazon Prime Video, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, um, HBO Max, <laughs> and then there's YouTube. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, there's tons of, tons of ways to consume content. We don't, yeah. I don't, I don't need to pay for cable. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's I it. think I wanted to, but you know what? Uh, this is not net. This is not rapid fire. Sorry. I <laughs> okay. did not cut my cable is because I really like to watch CNN also 
uh, Channel One, New York One. Oh, New York, okay. New York One is really good. The you know they they're really good, really community oriented, and tells a lot of stories about New York City. Do you know that New York One? It's yeah. the Spectrum. You know, yep. Spectrum. When you subscribe to Spectrum, you get a New York One. But yeah. anyway, yeah. All right, continue. Uh, what is your favorite food genre? Food genre? Yeah, like uh, Italian, Chinese, is Mexican. Oh. <laughs> so I I thought about very seriously thought about going to culinary school. Um, oh and, yeah, you're a chef. And I, I forgot well, about that. I'm an amateur cook. I'm definitely I definitely don't have the title chef. Um, but I, I do, I have cooked for, and I do cook for large groups of people from time to time. Wow. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, so picking a favorite genre of food, I don't know that I could do. Um, uh, I, I would say, I would say seafood is my favorite kind of like, uh, seafood's my favorite protein. Um, and then I love, uh, like leafy greens, um, so, so yeah, those, those are probably two top favorites. Mm, bok choy. Yeah. I love bok choy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I love broccoli Rob and I love, uh, you know, collard greens and mustard greens and yeah, you, mm -hmm. there's just so much you can do with them. They're so good. I like a vegetable called, it escaped me, you know, like a little cabbage. What do you call Brussels sprouts? Yes. Oh yes. yeah, I love Brussels sprouts. Yes, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Some people hate it, you know. Anyway, uh, which book did you read uh, recently? You really like? Uh, I am not. I am not a a, a reader these days. Okay. Um, so I used to commute. Uh, I used to spend a lot of time on trains and a lot of time traveling. I used to read all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I haven't, I don't read a lot uh, anymore. One book I would love, or, or an author I would love to reread some of his books um, is uh, somebody I just heard on a podcast recently was Malcolm Gladwell. Mm -hmm. um, so I really enjoyed his books. Uh, tipping point and then a couple others I whose titles escape me right now but uh, I'd love to reread his books but I, I should get back to reading more I just I just haven't been mm. three electronic devices you must have <laughs> that I must have <laughs> um, all right uh, phone camera and Bluetooth headphones I always lose my Bluetooth headphones. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> always lose it. So now, finally, speaking of that. Oh, can I add a fourth? Yes, you can add five. I'm, I'm going to add a fourth. My 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 watch. Oh, my watch. Which, which oh. I use to. I use it's a Garmin watch. I use it to track all of my training. So yeah, oh, I have to have it. That's cool. Now you have to download it. Now you also have to charge it. Oh my God, so many things to charge. I even have yeah. to charge this sucker. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got this is a Bluetooth, okay? But yeah. The reason I got it is because I would not lose one of them because they're together. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's so silly. But anyway, this thing, <clears throat> pretty cool. All right. So if you had a chance to have dinner with three persons, live or dead, who would you pick? Three people living or dead. <laughs> so I feel like I need to pick. Um, I kind of want to go with like people who are historically significant, um, like past, like, like ancient past, more recent past and, uh, and present. Um, so let's say, uh, Let's say Leif Erikson. Who was that? <laughs> so Leif Erikson was uh, the Viking who supposedly was the first European to set foot on North America um, and apparently made several trips back and forth um, between uh, the sort of Norse countries and North America um, about a thousand years ago. And so I think it'd be really interesting to, to talk to him and learn about his experiences and kind of what it was like, um, you know, meeting different peoples and traveling the way he did 
uh, a thousand years ago. So I think he'd be interesting. Um, I think, uh, you know, from more recent history, um, uh, I'm going to go with, uh, with Dr. Martin Luther King, um, uh, because I'd be curious to hear from his perspective, um, how he set about creating the change that he achieved in his lifetime, uh, and beyond. And, uh, and then in most recently, um, I'd really, I think he would just be an interesting and actually really fun person to, to spend some time with. I would love, uh, to have dinner with Barack Obama too. Yeah. Great choices. Yeah. Barack is, uh, he can be very fun. Yeah. Yeah. Strikes me as fun, funny, interesting. Yeah. I mean, there's so many people that I would love to love to sit down and have a conversation with, but if I had to pick three, I guess those are the ones off the top of my head. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I know you smoke before, um, it's happy hour right now. I'll take you to a coffee shop and <laughs> slash bar. What would you order? Uh, what would I order? Uh, it depends on what kind of whiskey they have. <laughs> oh, I forgot. You're a whiskey collector. Oh, my God. Yeah. So it depends on what kind of whiskey they have. Whiskey if they have something interesting, I, I might. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, likely whiskey. Oh, yeah. So or a beer. Your what's your yeah. favorite whiskey? Do you have a favorite one? Mm. Like, I don't know like that I have a favorite. $200 a bottle? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not really about price. I mean, some of the, some of the whiskeys that I go to a lot, um, you know, that I, that I drink more oftenly, more often than others are, are not incredibly expensive. Um, you know, less than a hundred dollars. So, uh, so yeah, you know, it, it really just depends, um, on what I'm in the mood for. So I like everything from, uh, you know, different styles of American whiskey, corn whiskey, uh, grain whiskeys to scotch whiskeys, um, uh, I've got, yeah, like I've got, I've got a lot of very different things. So, um, I've heard some good things about some Taiwanese whiskeys too, that I want to try. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So do, you, do you have a bar in your house? <laughs> I mean, not really. I've got, I've got lots of bottles of whiskey, but I don't have a really have a bar. <laughs> you should build <do> one. <laughs> oh, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm driving to you. <laughs> and it's funny, you know, I, I didn't, not know anything about whiskey so i just remember when andrew young lost and young and new york young and gather in my house and this is seen in my film you can see if you ever see please watch my film when you get a chance and uh and so we're so someone uh peter young guy brought a, a bottle of whiskey right and i had no idea you know what was it you know so so the next time when i went to uh when I went to the liquor store later, I said, I want to buy this thing. You know, this thing looks the same as Peter brought. <laughs> and when I was paying it, it cost $110. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> but then I feel, I, feel, I feel really embarrassed because I did not know, right? So I'll just pay for it. <laughs> yeah. Because, because I don't want to bargain, you know. So, oh, that's too expensive. Take it back. <laughs> but right. anyway. So yeah, that's my story of not knowing whiskey. Yeah. Um, okay. Last question. Shoot. For overtime. Coffee or so, tea? Coffee in the morning, tea in the afternoon. Aww. <laughs> Very good answer. But that's but that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do coffee in the morning, and then if I want something in the afternoon, I'll go for tea over coffee. Oh, that's very good. I'm still looking for my glasses. Anyway, I, without glasses, I can't. Yeah, eating again. Can you can you uh, say hello to uh, uh, oh what to what to see more? Hi, how are you, Shuckfin, uh, whiskey? <laughs> yeah, I can't see very well. Sorry. Um, anyway, thank you so much. Now this is like a clubhouse. Uh, Tom, it's so wonderful to have you. Uh, this is so much fun. And last word, Tom. Uh, we're going to close this room. <laughs> okay, your turn. Last words. Well, I just want to say thank you uh, for for letting me be here, uh, for inviting me to be a part of this uh, and to be on your channel, um, for the opportunity to meet uh, some of the folks here, Nick and Sharkfin um, and Sam, uh, who was here earlier. I don't know if he's still here. Um, 
but, uh, but yeah, really appreciate the opportunity. And, and I say this to people all the time. Um, I've said it in the room before. I don't know if you've heard me say it there, but I say to people all the time that, uh, I, I invite you to treat me like a resource. If you have questions, um, if there's any way I can help you, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I've got, you know, 21 plus years of production experience rattling around in my head, and I'm always happy to help people um, with that knowledge. So, so don't hesitate to reach out, treat me like a resource. Um, and uh, it would be my pleasure to help you if I could in any way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. Great to talk to you and hope I can meet you in person someday. Absolutely. I would yeah, love to do that. We're not that far away. True. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, audiences, and whether you're here with us or later, you're going to check us out. And please um, come back again. I usually do shows on Wednesday afternoon, five o'clock. Sometimes I do another show on uh, Sunday. So, yeah, I'm going to be in Europe uh, last week of August and September, three weeks. So I'll probably do some shows in Germany or in Greece. So I'll see cool. you. Yeah, I hope to keep the consistency of uh, this interview program. Also, by the way, my uh, clubhouse uh, meets on Fridays, uh, talk about uh, smartphone video production. So you're welcome, guys, to come in 12 p.m. Eastern time every fridays we did for 75 times 75 weeks yes nice yes okay awesome. all right i'm gonna say goodbye to all of you and thank you so much again so have a great great evening and happy hour <laughs> bye <laughs>